morning. Good morning. Can you hear me out there, guys? You can hear me. Good deal. Well, good to have you on this uh, warm May morning, Sunday before Memorial Day. And uh, it's good to see you, see all your nice shiny cars out there and some faces as well. And um, by the way of announcements, just a couple. One Tuesday night, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we'll be having church council. Uh, for those of you that's applicable, you got your email already. Tuesday night, we'll be meeting in here. For those that aren't comfortable, hello. We will be uh, also um, Zooming the meeting. And now there's just a couple. Uh, we'll be not having, we will not have youth group tonight. And we will have it on Wednesday night at 6.30. So no youth group tonight. We will have it on Wednesday night via Zoom. Uh, Thursday, don't forget about the prayer meeting at uh, 6 o'clock via Zoom as well. And um, for those of you in Facebook land, I'm looking at the camera right now. Remember, just stay in tune for uh, updates that the church is having periodically. And um, it's good to see you this morning. Our, our scripture comes from Psalm chapter 33, verses 6 through 12. It says, by the, word of the, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all uh, all their hosts. He gathers the water of the seas as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the earth stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever in his plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as in as his inheritance. Well, let's pray, and then we'll I'll begin our service today. God, we thank you for who you are, Lord. Um, we thank you for an opportunity to come and worship you today, God. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given us, God, through um, uh, on, on, our, on this U.S. soil today that you've given us. God, people are gathering all around the world today, Lord. But today we get to gather here at Lloyd to worship you, and to remember what you have done for us. God, we pray for Ms. Amanda, you be with her as she comes with us, and to sing and, and song today, Lord. We pray for Pastor Jared and the Major as they're coming and sharing, Lord. And uh, we pray you would just be with us. God, what we do would be honoring to you, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Can we hear me? Woo! All right. Huh? Awesome. Everybody hear me? All right. Let's get started this morning. Our first song, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing with me. Next two 
songs this morning are for um, honor Memorial Day, God of our fathers, and um, if my people will pray. So.
Well, good morning, everybody. Now, most of you, either through film or having attended some of our services, you've met the major to my left, who I'm going to bring on camera and stage in just a moment. We were able to do a film this last week, and we had a, a terrific time, and it was exciting to share. But what I've asked him to do is to talk about the difference between Veterans Day and what really Memorial Day means to him. And we'll follow that up in Scripture as we go, but would you bow your heads and pray with me as we get started. Father in heaven, we love you. And we are so thankful that you absolutely love the idea of a Memorial Day, the celebration of what you did, but God, you defeated death for us so that we can have life. There are many that are going through this weekend and they're hurting because they've lost a loved one on the battlefield. I can imagine how many sons, husbands, daughters, mothers, wives, whoever it was on the field of battle that gave their life so that I can stand up here this morning and proclaim the great day of salvation is you. And so, Father, as the Major and I talk, I pray that it touches the minds and touches the hearts and that your word changes the lives. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Major Haynes and I have known each other for about a year almost now. And we were talking about some things about Memorial Day. And I want you to share what Memorial Day means from your heart and uh, many of which he commanded in the battlefield. And I couldn't think of someone better at this moment. And so as we're all thankful for our veterans, this weekend goes out to those who have suffered losses. So brother, take it away. Thank you, Reverend Day. Reverend Day mentioned that uh, I should bring to your attention the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Since I only have 12 minutes to speak, I'm going to make this very uh, short and, and it's going to be very fast this morning. But the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day, Veterans Day is celebrated in November to honor all veterans of all wars who served in all periods of time, both peace and war. Memorial Day is the day that we celebrate our veterans, both men and women, who have given their lives in the sacrifice for their great country. I have uh, before me this morning a proclamation from our governor of the state of Florida. I'm not going to read that. It's a, it's a beautiful document, but it is rather lengthy, and uh, I don't want to take up uh, too much of the time uh, reading that. So I'm going to go right in to uh, notice I'm skipping some pages here because I'm already cutting some things out. But as a Florida veteran standing before you today, I want to thank all of you for joining in us, joining in us here today as we honor a very special group of Americans. They are the men and the women who served our country and who gave their lives in the service of our country in order to preserve our way of life and to make America a safe haven in which to live and raise our families. No cause is more noble than for a man or a woman to give their life in the defense and in the service of our country. Memorial Day is a national day of mourning. All U.S. flags should be displayed at half-staff during the morning hours. At noon, they should be raised back to full staff. It is a sacred day for all war veterans. None need to be reminded for the reason why Memorial Day must be consummated. But what about the general public? And more importantly, our future generations. Do most veterans really recognize the importance 
of Memorial Day. Why should we remember? Of course, sacrifice is meaningless without remembrance. America's collective consciousness demands that all citizens be aware of and recall on special occasions the death of their fellow countrymen during periods of war. Far too often, our nation as a whole takes for granted the freedoms which all Americans enjoy. These freedoms, we must remember, were paid for with the lives of others that few of us actually know. That's why on this day, we all collectively remember this as Memorial Day. Observance of Memorial Day should be regarded as a civic obligation, for this is a national debt that can only be repaid by individual Americans. By honoring the nation's war dead, we preserve their memory and thus their sacrifice. Since those first shots were fired at Lexington and Concord in the Revolutionary War, more than one and a half million Americans have died in the defense of our liberty and our freedom. In peacetime and in war, these Americans answered our nation's call and defended our American way of life. In honoring them today, we recognize their dedication, courage, and their sacrifice as we celebrate the freedom which they gave to us. Who are these people? These people are much the same as you and I. They are the farmers, the bankers, the lawyers, the general everyday American. Think of those who, in Lincoln's word, gave the last full measure of devotion, and you will have some idea of the price of our freedom. It will be a terrible price to pay if our freedom should fail, but a small price indeed if the world can eventually be free. Perhaps the most profound tribute of all was made on the first National Memorial Day in May of 1968 by General James A. Garfield when he said, they, our veterans, summed up and perfected by one supreme act, the highest virtue of men and our citizens. I think at that point, I want to now get into a more personal uh, point of this. Uh, how a soldier gives up his life for a stranger. And I would like to point out to you that I was raised in Madison County, just south of here, in a Christian home. Uh, I was either in church or I was working on the farm. That's the way I grew up. And at the age of 15, during World War II, I took off without my parents' permission and joined the Marine Corps. But my religious upbringing, I think, greatly prepared me to be a Marine in a time of war. And I did go on and serve 30 years and was involved in World War II, the North China Civil War, Korean War, and the Vietnam War. And I would like to cover with you at this time some of the passages from our Bible uh, that I studied when I was a youngster and I was reminded of by our military chaplains while on active duty. Ezra 7, 28. Because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in your faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Psalms 46, 1, God is our refuge 
and strength and ever present in our trouble. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Confidence in the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Our military people, when they go to war, uh, I hope that they go as Christians, and we know that some are Christians and some aren't. But there's an old saying that we don't have many atheists in a foxhole, and I found that to be true. I think most of us do rely on the good Lord. Myself, when I was exposed to combat, I always had that feeling that I was prepared to go no matter what happened. So I was, I think, very much at ease. I was able to perform my duties in the most hazardous of conditions without shirking back, shirking my duty. One of the things that, that is so important uh, in combat is your, your fellow soldier, your fellow Marine, sailor, or airman. They are the most important assets that we have. The man or the woman on your left and right, they are of vital importance. They are our friends, they're our buddies. They are our life's blood. The loss of one of our companions is one of the most devastating things that can occur in combat. But just think of the millions of our servicemen and women that have marched off to war, putting their lives on the line for this great country. And this is why we are here today celebrating Memorial Day in their honor. One of the most difficult things that I had to do in a combat situation was write that letter home. Write that letter when that son, that husband, became a casualty. The commanding officer is required to write a letter to the next of kin and impart in some way possible uh, the fact that that husband or that son, no matter what the relation, died in the service to his country with honor. And hopefully you can say that this veteran did not suffer So I think that, uh, as, as I recall back, my, one of my most important duties, and most difficult duties, was to write that letter. Uh, I looked, you know, with uh, reluctance on writing such a letter, and uh, it, was, it was a difficult time for me, and I'm sure for all commanders. Our sacred service is an expression of God's eternal good. I thank each and every one of you here today for the rich blessings that your sacrifices have brought to the hearts and the lives of others in securing the freedom of our country where we live and where we thrive as the greatest country on this earth. And if we have any veterans here today that have arrived home and never received that welcome back, I would like to officially welcome each and every one of you back. I know in some cases you did not receive that welcome, but welcome home, my fellow veteran. God bless you, and may you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you.
This morning, I just want to share. I want to share something very quickly. One of the things that keeps getting discussed in this section of scripture this morning, I want to leave with you. Out of John 15, verse 11, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends for all the things that I've heard from my father I've made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed to you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he'll give you these things I command you, that you love one another. Really, truly told is that each of us have lots of command <clears throat> of, of acquaintances, but we have very few friends in truth, and we have friends that have let us down. And so to sum up scripture and, and what the major said, to lose a friend at any level is tough, but to lose a friend, a brother in the midst of the battle of life. Beside the fact that if you've served or if you haven't served, many of you can relate to losing someone so desperately close who has fought to live. And so Jesus calls his friend because in truth, what scripture says is that when you're in the heart of the military, when you're fighting and when you're serving with one another, there's such a kinship. You can't take each other's spots, but you can do it things together and so really what scripture says in calling you a friend is it's like the bridegroom with his best man or his groomsman he lets you in on all the details of life he expresses what happens but you can't take God's place and so for any of you who have served in the military and you've suffered because you survived where others have not can I tell you that God has a plan for you? Can I tell you that he has a purpose for the reason that you're still breathing? He calls you friend because he wants to tell you about life and how to live it to the full. And if you're out there today or watching this later on and you've had a loved one who has given their life so that you can have freedom. They have given their life so that you can continue to do what God wants you to do. Here's the big challenge. Jesus is calling you friend because he wants to express wisdom and knowledge to you. And he wants you to be full in him. And now some of you have never served in the military and you don't know what that is like. I can relate to that, but I want to express something interesting. You may think today, I don't have an opportunity to lay my life down. I mean, the major was in World War II, Chinese Civil War, Korea, Vietnam. Some of you can relate to some of those things. I, I, I want you to know that you can still lay your life down. Here's the challenge of what Christ says is that you're no longer supposed to be your reason for living. You're not supposed to be your God anymore. What you're supposed to do is to take on the love that Jesus gave upon the cross. And actually, truly told is that every day ought to be a memorial day for the celebration that you gave your heart to Jesus. This is the reason we have services like this. Is to remember what Christ did. And for those who gave their heart to Jesus because of his death, his burial, his resurrection. Listen, they are way better than we are today. And so let me leave a last thought. Is it possible for Jesus to command us to love one another? I mean, how can true love be a command? Well, the truth is, 
It's not a feeling, it's an action. And so how do you express love to one another? How do you express love to your family and to your friends? How do you express love to those who have given so much? It's through our actions. And so this morning, the great challenge of our life is have you laid down your life so that another person can see your testimony in Jesus Christ? And so maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus. He really did exist. He came to earth for you and for me. He put himself on a cross willingly. Nobody took it. And he gave his life. And in three days, he came back so that you and I can have life to the full. Are you a friend of God? Are you living in such a way that he shares knowledge and wisdom? So here's the great challenge. If you don't know who Jesus is, in just a moment we're going to sing a song. And we want to invite you to say, okay, God, here it is. Jesus, I want to be full in you. I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. I want your friendship. Would you forgive me for my sins? For those of you who have given your heart to Jesus years ago, is there somebody on your heart that you need to reach out to? To express love for? To lay down your desires so that they can see Jesus in you? Don't leave this weekend without saying, okay, God, I am going to be a living testimony to what you did in my life. Let this be the best weekend in the spiritual war that we have. I want to be a friend to the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, there are many today that are hurting. They need healing. They need touching from you. Their hearts are heavy. And God, as they remember the sacrifices of so many, I am praying this moment. That God, your word, your spirit will touch our hearts. Thank you for calling us friend. Thank you for changing our lives. And so I'm asking that this day be a day of celebration in you. For any who don't know you, oh, Father, I pray that they will know you from this moment on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as We pray a blessing on all of you. I hope you're safe this weekend when you go to the river, when you go to the lake, and when you go to Grandma's house. Because I've heard many of you are starting to venture out. Do so. Enjoy. Get a little sun, but put on a little block. Okay? And so as you go through, take the example of what Jesus did and be a friend to somebody so that they can see Jesus in you.
Have a wonderful time. Let's close in a time of prayer. And God bless this land. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you do and all the service people who have served. Top to bottom, Lord Jesus, thank you for those who have given so much. May you touch the families in a special way. And for all who are celebrating this weekend, I ask that you bring healing to their body. Touch their hearts and their minds. Keep them safe as we continue to strive to be a friend. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye, everybody.